Hello, so today I wanted to review this little sample sample I have from Binley Distillery in Australia. Um, this is a cask picked by Single Cask Nation, which is an American bottler, and it is 14 years old, bottled at 65.1% alcohol. Um, I don't actually see a vintage on this, um, but by math, figure it was you know probably distilled in 97, 98, somewhere in there. Uh, the problem I've been having with this is trying to think of a sparring partner for it. Uh, what could you possibly come up with as a fun thing to pair with a 14-year-old Australian rum? Uh, second fill bourbon cast, by the way. My thought, why not go to South Africa? Just just head west uh, for a ways. Uh, this is MOBA. This is MOBA French cask, bottled uh, 2019. It at a um, rather strong 65% alcohol volume. So I have made no notes on these. I will be reviewing by the seat of my pants here. Uh, and let's get this started. Okay. A bit of a contrast on these. As I recall, the bean lay is, um, I can't re remember if it's all column still or if it's like a, a kind of hybrid-y setup. Um, but in any case, it's, it's not a pot still, but the MOBA has this, it's not only pot still, it's this crazy, like, I don't even know how to describe it. Go find a picture of the MOBA still setup. It looks like like HP Lovecraft designed, you know, a distillery. It's it it's really weird looking. Um, and what they've done with this is to basically uh, throw it in some X wine casks, some X uh, some French oak casks that have previously contained uh, South African red wine. They've um, you know, refurbished it and uh, recharred it at the distillery, and the rum has gone in for maybe two years or so. All right, let's get this started. Two very different rums from similar latitudes, however, um, <laughs> at similar strengths. Oh, Jesus. All right, let's get started with the MOBA here. Oh. Uh, intense is the first word that comes to mind. Yeah, this smells very, very nippy and just... Like, I kind of want to hold my nose... I, I have to sort of, like, physically force myself to push my nose in the glass, such as the strength of the alcohol on this. Yeah, so what am, what am I getting... Uh, MOBA is, of course, a cane juice-based rum. This is not one of their um, high F ester efforts. This is, you know, their standard... I can't even call it low ester. Their, their standard output. What am I getting? I am getting a lot of kind of desserty stuff. Uh, like homemade whipped cream is uh, a first note to come to. Um, I hate to use this note because it's overused on YouTube reviews, of, but brown sugar. There's quite a lot of, and we're talking like, we're not talking like the cheap stuff you get in like the, the little domino boxes at the grocery store. This is real like brown sugar that actually has some molasses concept, content to it. Um, certainly some... Uh, I can't even say black pepper. This is more like like aromatic than that. This is pink peppercorns. Um, touch of black olive. And just a lot of alcohol nip on this. Sixty-five percent, certainly, you know, um, intense. Some 
fennel as well. I don't know. It, it, it smells like a relatively young rum. I'm not getting any like overt red wine notes on this. Yeah, we're mostly get it's mostly the whipped cream meets real serious brown sugar meets like olives and fennel -y stuff. That's most of what I'm getting. And that's okay. Um, let's see what happens on the palate. <coughs> yeah, this this is gonna need some water. Um, much the same kind of story. I'm getting a lot of creme brulee. Um, that same kind of like real Louisiana brown sugar um, sort of thing. Black olive. But some green olives in there too. Definitely some fennel, salted licorice, touch of brininess. Pepper. Um, again, I'm gonna go more like pink peppercorns than my standard kind of black pepper go-to. Just hints of little Hints of dried fruitiness, but it's, it's very kind of vague, actually. Um, much vigor than I would expect from something really advertising itself as like, um, you know, French oak rum. So there's uh, maybe a little bit of a, of a dried fig kind of note, but that's most of what I'm getting. Um, kind of some pleasant ashiness. Nice, but it's uh, for for me for my palate right now by by no means exceptional, um, and I I say that as someone who has really enjoyed uh, MOBA stuff in the past. All right, I'm gonna give this a couple squirts of water, see what happens. Four, five. We're gonna need at least five. Probably more than five. Definitely more than five. We're gonna go six. Well, like, yeah, like five and three quarters. <laughs> Thanks for like suffering with me as I try to understand these things. Do you know how awesome you are to kind of just suffer through me like adding water to these things and figure out tasting notes and stuff? You're great. I like you. All right, moving on to the bean lay. I don't know if you can tell, but the bean lay is actually a little bit darker in color, despite the fact that, you know, this is second fill re bourbon versus relatively fresh, retoasted, recharred French oak. So that's interesting. On the nose of the Beanley, 14 year old. Much more kind of high toned, actually. Um, I'm getting a. Okay, so starting off with a kind of smoky toffee note, which actually reminds me a little bit of, of um, like Column Still Guyana, which is not a bad place to be at all. I love Column Still Guyana. But then there's some like kind of incense notes. There's some like aromatic, I'm like aromatic wood, like 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 balsa or like um, like a Jenga set. It smells a little bit like a Jenga set. A little bit of uh, expensive perfume, you know, like sixty perfume. 
So we're not talking like post-war, we're talking like getting into the late 60s, that kind of per perfume. Um, there is some RC Cola creeping in, which is, you know, perfectly fine for uh, either, you know, column still rum or like column setup rum. That's kind of, you know, I, I expect to get a little RC Cola. Touches of like, what is that? Um, so almost lime peel, but it's more like dried lime peel or something. Happen, yeah, definitely like dried lime peel, a little almost dried grapefruit peel, if that makes sense. One thing I will say is, this, despite the fact that the proofs are almost the same, the bean lay is easier to nose. White pepper. I don't know. It's it smells like just a a very clean rum that's been distilled to a pretty high strength. I would think, you know, ninety plus percent coming off the still, and then aged in a pretty decent bourbon cask. That's that's mostly what I'm getting. It's the little details that make this nice. That the little. Incense balsa wood notes. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty fun. On the palate. <coughs> now the alcohol is coming through. Now I can feel that 65%. Um, Yeah, wow. Um, so first of all, there is a uh, not a Smarties kind of thing, like a sour patch candy kind of happening, but not the but without the sour part of it, if that makes sense. So sour patch, but no sour. Makes sense. Um, or even like a like a like a gobstopper kind of character. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that, like a like a gobstopper kind of character to, on this but with some floral, perfumey, incense kinds of, kinds of notes. <clears throat> nice, more of a, um, what am I getting? Uh, almost a, more of a Pepsi thing on the palate than like an RC Cola thing as far as the, the cola element of this goes, but it's definitely kind of got that cola thing happening. Uh, white pepper. Little bit of pineapple upside down cake on this. <coughs> Touch of salted licorice on this as well. I'm not really getting any oliviness. There's no, really no really no savory stuff happening. It's um, all about the aromatic elements and the cola. And that little bit of pepper and that little bit of like, like over stewed sweet tea, maybe. <clears throat> I'm fine with this. I'm really curious to see what it, what it does with water. Um, to see like if it if that brings out any other complexities, it's really water that's gonna uh, kind of split these two apart. Three, four, five. Yeah, I mean, despite the the very different m methods of producing these. In some ways, I my feelings and my complaints about them are sort of the same. Like they're they're really really big and really really boozy. They don't bring a a ton of complexity to the table. So I'm really hoping water brings that out. 
five squirts. I'm gonna go five and a half on this. <coughs> Definitely gonna go five and a half on this. Good lord. Um, how did I survive still strength doc? That was like 20 degrees of alcohol stronger than these, and these are making me like cough. Good lord. Okay, back to the MOBA. Alright, uh, MOBA French cask. Let's see what this does with water. Yeah, not, not, not so much. I mean, I'm still getting more or less the same notes from before. I'm just not, not getting those really aggressive, intense alcohol nippiness elements. Yeah, so take some like homemade whipped cream, dump some like, you know, gourmet Louisiana um, brown sugar into it, throw a couple of olives in, throw a couple of sticks of um, like salted licorice in. That's basically what this smells like. Um, trying try to think of anything else. Maybe a touch of cardamom, like one cardamom pod. That's about it. Um, it's it's very pleasant, but it's pretty darn simple. Which is not what I you know I don't associate simplicity with what Moa puts out. So this is a little bit of a surprise for me. On um, the palette, here we go. Yeah, same kind of story. Um, we're leading with some fennel, which is very pleasant. There's some kind of earthy, yeah, earthy fennel notes, which is nice, along with the with the salted licorice. But yeah, it's it's very just kind of like. Creamy, desserty, little, with a little bit of savory oliviness. I don't, it just feels a little basic. Like the finish holds on reasonably long, not even that long. Like a like kind of it's kind of a medium length finish, but the mouth length kind of cuts off not even before it gets my molars. It cuts off like like you know two two or three teeth before the end. And that's, again, not what I expect MOBA to do. I kind of hold these folks to a higher standard. Certainly pleasant. There's a, there's a weight and a seriousness to the, to, the, um, to the flavors that are there. But, yeah, I don't know, man. This is... If I were drinking this, I would certainly add water. Let's start with that. Like 65% is just, I, I have a hard time taking it fast strength. I, I much prefer this with water. Um, in terms of quality, this is an 83 point rum. It's an 83 point rum. Um, and that's, that's fine, but it's, it's a distillery that I, I really, we're, it's it's maybe not a top tier distillery for me, but it's it's up there. I mean that the Strand One Fifty One is or One Hundred One. I'm sorry, Strand One Hundred One is really 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 good, and this is this is not the mobile I would buy. All right, uh, eighty three points. Let's move on to the Benley. Now with a little bit of water. Ooh. There is a little bit of, um, oh, sorry, the camera just hiccuped on me. 
there's a fruitiness that's coming out now, almost like a, what is that? Uh, like a smoky grape fago sort of note, but nice. I mean, the, yeah, so, so we're taking that smoky toffee note I mentioned before. We're just introducing a little bit of grape fago into that. It's, it's all sort of wrapped into it itself. Nice. Doesn't, you know, hasn't really blossomed into a super duper complex spirit at all, but um, yeah, it smells nice. I appreciate this. Let's see what happens on the palate. Not a whole lot of change on the palate, um, which is okay. This was nice before, but um, you know, knowing single cast na nations pricing, I can't imagine this is particularly cheap. Um, let me give this one more shot. Yeah, Pepsi, exotic wood, Incense, touch of fennel, some floral notes playing around in there. Um, and that's kind of most of what's going on. Um, it's nice. I, I, I do actually like this more than the MOBA, which I wasn't expecting. I was expecting the, uh, the MOBA to kind of run away with this, with the, the quality of the distillate. But no. Um, the Bainley wins on this. Uh, I'm still not going to give it a super high score. This is an 84 point run for me. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it wins against the competition. Okay. Um, and that's just how it turned out. 83 points for the MOBA French cask and 84 points for the um, Single Cash Nation 14-year-old Bainley. I I don't know if I can hold, do a whole lot with either of these. They're good. They're fine. I don't know if I want to have more of them. Is that terrible? Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope this was a little bit informative if you see either of these around. And uh, cheers.